Hey guys and welcome to Hardy Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is severe acute respiratory syndrome, also commonly known as the SARS virus. So let's get started. So what is severe acute respiratory syndrome or SARS? The SARS virus is a highly contagious respiratory illness that first appeared in November 2002 in Guangdong province, China, and is said to be a type of coronavirus known as SARS-CoV. The disease spread rapidly to more than two dozen countries across the world following its 2002 outbreak, infecting over 8,098 people and killing at least 774 people before it could finally be contained in 2004. So from this definition of SARS, we get that it's actually a respiratory illness or a respiratory infection that first emerged in China in November 2002 and then spread to various other countries thereafter and infecting over 8,000 people. So the SARS virus is a type of coronavirus. So coronaviruses have become very common lately. And this is a type of coronavirus that infects humans and causes a severe respiratory infection. So now that we know what SARS is, let's take a closer look at what causes SARS. So as I mentioned in the slide before, SARS is caused by a coronavirus, which is a type of virus usually associated with pneumonia and the common cold in humans. The source of the virus, however, was proved to come from bats and palm civets in southern China, and once contracted by humans, is very difficult to contain since SARS is an airborne virus, which means it spreads in a very rapid and easy way, similar to that of colds and flus. So when we did some further investigation of the 2002 outbreak in southern China, we found that the source of the SARS coronavirus was actually from bats in China, which is where the virus actually lives and thrives normally. And then we had the intermediate host, which became an important part of this investigation, and that is actually the palm civets. So the palm civets are actually a meat or delicacy which the Chinese people enjoy. So this outbreak actually began from the ingestion of these civets, which tested positive for the coronavirus. And once the human host became infected, it was very easy for the virus to spread. Because as we now know, this virus is an airborne virus, which means it spreads quite rapidly through a cough or a sneeze. So this was actually the way in which the 2002 outbreak happened of the SARS coronavirus. The prevention of the SARS virus. So the best way is to not travel to areas of the world where there's an uncontrolled current SARS outbreak. And also there's several ways in which we could prevent the spreading of the infection. And it's important to wash your hands thoroughly using an alcohol-based hand detergent, covering your mouth and nose when you sneeze or cough, avoid sharing food, drink, and utensils, and regularly cleaning surfaces with disinfectant. So because this virus is airborne, we want to disinfect all surfaces that come into contact with us. So what are the signs and symptoms of the SARS virus? So the SARS virus has flu-like symptoms that usually begin three to seven days after the initial infection. So some of the symptoms include a high temperature, which is called a fever, extreme tiredness, which is fatigue, a dry cough, breathing difficulties, an increasing lack of oxygen in the blood, which can be fatal in the most severe cases, headaches, chills, muscle pain, loss of appetite, and diarrhea. So how can one go about diagnosing SARS? The test used to diagnose this disease is called the reverse transcriptase PCR test or RT-PCR test. And this test measures the amount of viral RNA, a chain of cells that carry genetic information, from a sample of the patient's sputum, serum, or blood. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of the SARS virus. So there's currently no specific antiviral agent that is available for the treatment of this infection, and there's also no vaccine. Therefore, the treatment given is purely supportive and includes supplemental oxygen and conservative fluid management as indicated by the clinical condition of the patient. And it is also essential to provide the infected patient with a face mask and place the patient in a closed room to prevent any further spreading of this disease. So the patient has to be clinically isolated to prevent any further spreading of this disease because it spreads so quickly and easily through a cough or a sneeze. The best way to combat this infection is to completely isolate the infected individual. 
And that brings us to the end of this video on SARS. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.